Did I guess? <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Good thing I, I clicked it, started. and it did start recording. Before, Maybe. I think. Maybe just power it off right now. Can you check what's up? Now it's on. It's so definitely on. It's recording? Yeah. Okay, good. Welcome to <laughs> lecture 20 something, where we have been already doing things that were not that important. We've just been going over some homework. Um, so, yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> 33, this is the parametric homework we're going over. 33 is, um, oh, what is this, by the way? Did you guys, when you saw this particular parametric Pair of parametric equations, did you think that, oh man, I've seen that before. No. It's me? Yeah, those little, like, lines, I don't remember the name of the whole thing. What? Wait, what are they, everyone? Equations. Yeah, it's an ellipse, right? This is just an ellipse. Is that what you meant? Did you forget the word for ellipse? <laughs> No, this is not that. This is definitely a, this is definitely an ellipse, right? Because um, this is like, right? Remember, cosine theta comma sine x is cosine theta and y is sine theta, and that would just be a circle. But this has been a circle which, in which the x coordinate has been stretched out by two. But then also, it's just x has just been moved four to the right, and y just moved down one. So this is definitely an ellipse. Yeah. How are the people um, on the internet going to know what the homework is? <laughs> the homework is posted on the website that no one ever reads. Oh, it's also posted on the website. Oh, yeah, Jason Close. Thank you. Alright. Um, good. 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 Wait, hold on. Wait, what? What is the website? <laughs> no, it doesn't exist yet. Um, wait. <laughs> Don't ask any questions. Um, okay, good. We're on number 33. Um, no, the website... Is, it doesn't exist. It's in free production. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna visit the free production. Okay, um, anyway, the point is that since this is an ellipse, we should definitely expect there to be two vertical tangents and two horizontal tangents, and they should be sort of like symmetric and stuff like that, symmetric places. Okay. And that is indeed what turns out to be the case once you like do the appropriate math. Bam, bam, good, any questions about that? No, good, 39. Can we just like be done with this? Oh, except I think this is wrong. No, it's right, maybe. Is it right? I know, I feel like there was a, I feel like there should have been another T somewhere. No, 4T? I thought it was 4T, yeah. Isn't that like, let's check the word. 4T plus 2 minus 2T minus 4, so isn't that 4T minus, something went wrong. I don't know. Well, they didn't, when they multiply the T into the denominator, they didn't add it. When they multiply 2 plus 1 over t and 2 plus 1, they didn't add the t to the top. Students add the t to the top. I still kind of don't know what you're talking about, unfortunately. Yeah, we look at the first thing. Uh, so 2 t plus 1 over 2 t minus 1 over 2 t plus 1. That, that's right, yeah? Yeah, then you have the next one in the denominator, isn't it? Like the big denominator, it's 2 plus 1 over t at the very bottom. And then when you go to the next one, it's 2t plus 1, then you can add a t to the top when they multiply. Ah. Oh, yeah, they multiply by t over t. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So a t, just a t, so via like algebra, a t appears here. Yeah, which makes this sign chart like wrong, right? Well, technically, it's kind of It was sort of right by accident. But anyway, um, yeah, so what we have is the formula. This, is, this, this was x equals 2t plus l and t, y equals 2t minus l and t. And it turns out that the formula is 4t over 2t plus 1 cubed. Cool? Uh, and then we can make a sign chart for this. Um, what is the sign chart for this? Well, um, there'll be a sign change at 0, and then there will also be a sign change at negative 1 half. And, and it's going to be quadratic -y. Hold on, I, I'm with you. Um, but as it turns out, uh, though that is the correct sign chart for this expression, um, because the domain of natural log is only positive numbers, all this stuff over here is like irrelevant. And so the answer is, from zero to infinity, which is all the numbers which are in the domain, the second derivative is positive, so this thing is concave up. We cool? Good, good, can I have this homework? Uh, put in a little pile over there next to Rohan. We need to go like really fast though. That took 10 minutes longer than it should have. Maybe more. Yeah.
I feel like you should know. Um, see, we can that black marker. What's up? Oh, yeah. Okay, um, guys, so we did all of these rectilinear motion problems last week and, and earlier this week. And here's what we learned about them. Um, we have studied, very carefully, motion in one dimension. If there is a particle which is just going back and forth along a number line, I am totally fine with that, and so are you. Um, but more interestingly is um, perhaps motion in two dimensions, motion in a plane. So we, we say all these things like, um, we say these things all the time like, yeah, velocity is a vector, you know, speed is a scalar. All true, but when you're only moving in one dimension, it's kind of like a fake vector, right? Because it's like a one-dimensional vector, which is why we've been able to capture uh, velocity with a single number, with a signed number, which you can think of as like a one-dimensional vector because you can go in either direction. But if we're going to be moving around in a plane, then we need like real vectors, right? So uh, let's do it. Let's move around in a plane. And for that we need, well, often what we have are a pair of parametric equations. Um, so looking right here on the top of page one is this uh, object. And the x-coordinate, the position of the x-coordinate at any given time is going to be sine t. And the position of the y-coordinate at any given time is going to be 1 half, um, one half t squared. OK, so uh, what is? What is the position vector for this object? Uses. Is it just sine t, one half t squared? Yeah, it is. Uses says, hey man, I know what a position vector is. A position vector should just tell me at any given time what my position is. Well, that's kind of what these parametric equations do, right? So, I mean, I know we haven't done vectors in like forever. You haven't done them since maybe like, well, I guess we did them earlier this year, freak out, freak out, see? Um, but the position vector uh, is just sine t comma one half t squared. That's just what a position vector is. Um, all right, um, what is the velocity vector for this particle? Um, T. Yeah, exactly. If I am, what is a velocity? But what is the meaning of a velocity vector? A velocity vector should tell you, you know, kind of what the velocity is, right? How I am moving, how am I moving in the x direction, and also how am I moving in the y direction? Well, if this is my position in along the x, uh, along the x axis, if this is how I'm moving along, uh, sort of um, along the x axis. Then the derivative dx dt, which is just cosine t, is going to be the amount in which I'm moving uh, along the x. It's going to be the, my rate of change along the x-axis, and the derivative of this is going to be my rate of change along the y-axis. And so you put them together. That's just my velocity vector. Okay, cool. And then um, what is my acceleration vector? Yeah, you just do it again. Negative sine t one. Uh, and then, okay, so there's like this little picture here. Um, it's a little bit hard to draw, but if you think about what's happening, right? X is sine t, so the x coordinate is just kind of doing a normal like sine curve, right? But as the x coordinate is doing the normal sine curve, the y coordinate is growing like a parabola grows. So that's why this is going to have this kind of weird sort of really kind of slow at first and then continuously moving faster and faster up this, uh, up the y-axis. Okay, so now that we've computed the position, velocity, and acceleration vector in general, um, part D says describe the motion of the particle at time t equals 6. In other words, what's going on at t equals 6? Where am I? How am I moving? And how am I thinking about moving? That's the second derivative. Sine 6. 
What is sine 6? Good question. Uh, Emma says, yo, let's just take the position at t equals 6. What vector do I get when I do that? It is a good question. That's why I asked. Answer? Sine 6, comma, 18, yeah. Don't be scared of a little bit of radians. What is sine 6 basically more or less? Sine 2 pi. Yeah, it's like, it's like pretty close to sine 2 pi, right? Because So picture a unit circle in your brain, sine 2 pi would be 0, so a little bit less than 2 pi would be like what? Um, no, not like that. Yeah. I don't know, like negative 0.1? That seems pretty good, right? The graph like stops at 18. Yeah, also the graph stops at 18, so that's like good, right? Yeah. In other words, this must be the picture of the, of the particle in the interval from 0 to 6, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, good. Uh, okay, I'd be happy with that. What is my velocity vector uh, uh, at, at time 6? Um, almost 1 and then 6. Yeah, it's just cosine 6, gamma 6. In other words, yeah, what is, what is cosine 6? Like 0.9 or something. Yeah, like 0.9, something like that. Actually, like 0.99. I don't know. Whatever, if you really want to. Wanna, you can get out like a calculator or something if you want. Uh, what is my acceleration vector at t equals 6? That's like negative sine 6 comma 1. So I guess that's like, that's like 0.1 comma 1, right? Okay, so if I had to describe this in words, I guess I would say, well... At time t equals 6, first off, I'm like up here somewhere, right? So here I am at t equals 6. But it's not, not only am I up there, but also I'm moving in a certain direction at that moment. In what direction am I kind of like moving right then? Sort of like, yeah, like the vector sort of is kind of going like, right? Going over, over 1, but like up 6, which is kind of looks about right, yeah? That's like sort of my velocity vector at that moment. And then my acceleration vector, I'm not really sure how to talk about that, right? I guess this, what this is saying is that my, my speed along the x-axis is still growing ever so slightly. My speed along the y-axis is in fact changing at a constant rate or something. Yeah, the speed is changing at a constant rate. Um, good. Uh, cool. Uh, cool. Let's do the second one. The second one is a little bit more interesting. So go. Do it. Worksheet called Why motion. Position? Everyone does that, but I do it too. So I always think it's fundamental. I see it. Sorry. Position. You can make up some crap if you want. It's German for. <laughs> like it can't be D, it can't be P. So that's. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to use D because it's like, you know, DT and stuff. You know, DDX. P is like momentum or something. Because we use going so much to make these problems. There aren't enough letters. Or you have to use like Greek and Greek. Like, oh, 
Oh, yeah, think about that. Crash. Yeah. I'll also tell you how we're going to park in San Francisco, me, you, and I on Mars. Oh, there you go. All right. Um, so the position vector is 4 sine t, 2 cosine t. And the velocity vector, it seems like you guys probably did this already, right? That's like um, something that's like 4, four cosine t, comma, negative 2 sine t. That is the velocity vector in general. But Laura, they want to know what the they want to know what the speed is at t equals pi over four. Oh man, what do I do now? No, I'm not going to call on you because you're right. What do I do now? Oh, you're all right too. Um, yeah. So I need to figure out. Well, I should figure out what my velocity is at t equals pi over four first. Let's do that, right? Because I'm not interested in the velocity in general. I'm interested in the velocity at pi over four. Okay, it's just a matter of plugging in pi over four plus pi over four root. 2 over 2, so that's like 2 root 2, comma, um, I guess that would be so, so negative root 2, right? Yeah, cool. Okay. okay. Let's interpret that result in the context of our picture. Um, so, yeah, somewhat. Samin, which direction am I moving about this thing? Clockwise or counterclockwise? I think it's clockwise this time, right? Yeah, because um, Giles made this work. He switched it up a little bit. He, he assigned x the sine the, the he assigned sine to the x coordinate. So um, it's pretty sneaky, yeah. So the x coordinate is going like is going like but the y coordinate is starting pi and then going down. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I guess you could just plug in zero. If you plug in zero, you'll be here, and at pi over two, you'll be here. So yeah, we're going clockwise around this guy. All right. So where am I at? Uh, oh, Eric. No. Yeah. Where? What is my position at pi over four? What is what is s at t equals pi over four? What is it? Two root two. Uh, two root two, comma root two. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which means that I must be like about. So that would be like two point eight, comma one point four. So I want to say like I'm pretty much here at t equals pi over four and moving that way. And what does this what does this velocity vector computation? What does it tell me about what's going on at this point? Well, it tells me that at that point. My velocity is a vector which is telling me to go over 2 root 2 and down root 2. In other words, do you guys kind of see what's going on here? It's like there's this like sort of velocity vector which has sort of magnitude go over 2 root 2 and go down 2 root 2. And this actually goes back to the very first day that we talked about derivatives. Remember we said that the, the tangent line can be interpreted, the slope of the tangent line to the curve can be interpreted as the path that the object would take if you stopped uh, changing the velocity. Stop changing, yeah, if you locked in the velocity as to what it was at that moment, it would just go off in that direction, right? And that's kind of what a velocity vector does. It tells you at that moment what is the velocity, what in fact, in other words, like what is the object going to keep doing if you lock in that velocity at that time. So what we can do is we can decompose that vector into its components, um, and the components are negative root 2 uh, in the y direction and 2 root 2 in the x direction. So now it comes to actually answering the question, what is the speed? So what is the speed? Root 10. Yeah, why? Because you just do Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, yeah, he says the speed um, when you're doing when you're doing fake vectors, which are just like one dimensional, then the speed is just the absolute value of the velocity. But here, what is speed? The speed in England, what is just the magnitude of the velocity vector? And the magnitude of the velocity vector is just the length of the hypotenuse of that triangle. Yeah. So is that pretty clear? Yeah. So this the speed at t equals pi over four is just by the Pythagorean theorem, it's root ten. Cool. Yo. What does dy dx mean here? dy dx would be the slope of the tangent line to the curve? I don't know. So it would be like the direction, it would be, yeah, I don't know. 
like in this case it would be negative a half, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's sort of the directional component of the velocity vector or something. Uh, yeah. All right. You will do the rest of this worksheet for homework on the back. There are some interesting problems that are kind of tricky. Uh, good luck. Let's have a quiz. Should I turn off the camera? Turn off the camera.